How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And today, I'm gonna to give you a full interior tour of our 2020 HQ12. So let's get into this, let's get going. So here I am inside of the HQ12 and the roof is, is lowered. I'm just standing in the entry step. So here, I'll just step in here real quick here. You can see where it is. So this is about where it ends up being while the roof is down. And the reason why I'm showing you this is if you're traveling down the road and you're tired, you pull over into a truck stop or something, your side of the road, and you want to climb back here and lay down the bed, you have plenty of room to do that. You would just have to duck down so that way you're not opening up the roof. So it is possible, okay? So if you have that question, you can do that. So there's a couple bars. There's a, a bar here. This is not a pull-up bar. Um, this is for, you know, I use this for pushing up as well as for pulling down when it's time to close the roof down. But this is gonna be your locking mechanism. So right now this is actually locked. You have this red lever with a little bar on it. So you raise that up out of the way, pull that bar off. So now the bar is out of the way. And then it's kind of a, a, a dual purpose. So I will lift this and push this at the same time. Now, there are shocks and springs that help to raise this up. Now, on occasion, I get lucky and the whole thing will open up all at once, but usually I gotta do one side, then go over and push open the other side. So basically what I do, I'm gonna step up in here and I'm gonna push this up, and raise that all up at the same time. All right, we get that up into position and, which you can't see it unless you turn around, as you can see, the other side has opened up as well, which again, makes it really nice, really convenient. If it doesn't do that, that's okay. It just means you go over there, you push that side up and it opens up even easier than this side does. So now that I have the roof extended, you can see I have quite a bit more room. And actually this is our tallest unit. So with the roof extended up, we actually have six foot seven inches worth of head clearance. Now, not so much at the air conditioner, you run it about 6.5 or so, but this is our tallest unit. The second tallest one we have is our classic 12, uh, which is also a pop top, and that one comes in at six foot five. So if you're looking for some headroom, this is the unit for your headroom. Now, one of the most exciting features I love, I'm really excited about this because they've changed the material. They went from a cotton material to a polyvinyl material. And so you can, you can kind of see it as it looks different. It's not a cotton tent part or a cotton polyester tent. Now it is a, uh, again, it's more of a polymer. It's really nice. So it's gonna really help with, with uh, keeping water out, keeping moisture down. Um, if you're not taking care of your tent material properly, this will help rectify that. That way you're not ending up with moldy tents because if you're not keeping your tents dry, if you pack it away wet, you can pack it away wet, but you need to open it back up to dry out. This, while you should still open it up to help maintain your system, it's not as crucial with the regular cotton poly, uh, polyesters. But one of the things I like to do with one of these windows, because all these windows are closed, these little vent areas, I'm gonna open it up now because it's a little warm in here, but here's one of the things I do. A lot of people, once they open them, they'll open it up and then they'll start rolling the window or the flap at the very end. Well, to me, that's a lot of rolling. So what I do, just a little trick I do, is especially with larger ones, I fold it in half first. Now I have half the material I have to roll, and then I'll just roll that. And I only gotta what, do two little rolls, and then there's a little flap. If you're not familiar with something like this, there's a little strap right here, and there's a piece of plastic, uh, like a T handle on the other side. You run that through it just like that, and that helps hold that in place. And you just do the same thing in here. And again, I realize some of you may be totally 100% familiar and you're going, why the heck are you showing us this jump buck? We know what this works, but sometimes some people just aren't familiar with it. I have come across that. So I wanna make sure that everyone understands how these things function. So please forgive me if you already know how that functions. So here we have this tied up. So we have these windows all the way around. So what I'm gonna do real quick to keep me from sweating to death in this hot California heat is we're gonna go stop for a second. We're gonna open up some windows and I'll be right back. All right, so we got a little bit of airflow through the unit. And I tell you what, opening these windows in this HQ12 really allows a lot of airflow through. It makes it really nice, really comfortable in here. As long as you have favorable weather, you got a nice breeze, it's very comfortable being in here. And again, I, I love, I love this polymer. I love this material. 
Um, it looks really nice, looks really clean. I'm excited about it and I'm excited to have it. So here back here in our door, we have our refrigerator. It's got a small refrigerator. I believe it's like a 26 cubic, cubic foot refrigerator. Uh, you know, you're not gonna fit everything in there, but you can fit some of the important necessities. Um, beyond that, you know, you can be using, um, you know, a cooler, you can still use a cooler. There's even a, a, a freezer here, all right? You got a little freezer area in here. Um, and then this unit works off of your battery. It's actually been on and it's actually quite cold right now. So this is gonna work off of your 12 volt system, just so you're aware of that. Above that, we have a little drawer area. Now, you can't really store much. This is more of your access to underneath your stove. Um, and it is, is kind of open here on the side, but you can ha slip a few things in there, but maybe not leave them there. And then I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna stick low. And then we have this cabinet here. Now this cabinet here is gonna have your triple filtration system. So again, we were talking about the, the filtration earlier. So again, it's a separate water pump. The water pump is gonna draw it up go through that filtration and it's going to come out on your sink. So I'm going to jump over to the sink real quick and talk about the differences. So if you, ha you utilize the same faucet, so there's two openings. I'm not sure if you can see these here. So one faucet here, this one here, comes out the front faucet. That's going to come off of your 50 gallon general water tank. Then there's a little flip valve here. This just flips forward and this is going to turn on your secondary pump it's going to go through your drinking through your filtration system and it's going to come out this spigot here so again you have the same place where the water is coming out but it's two different water systems so that way you have normal water or general water and then you have your drinking water underneath the sink we have well, again access to our pipes underneath the sink right here and a little bit of storage room if you need below that we have our microwave and our microwave will work off of our 2000 watt inverter and i'll show you the inverter in just a little bit and below that down the bottom is going to be your utensil drawer right now we got our kenwood box in here but it's our utensil drawer um, you know your knives and spoons and forks and whatnot and it also has a soft closed feature so you know and i'll show you one more time you close it and it grabs and pulls it closed and again one other feature obviously is our handles remember these lock they stay closed so that way, when you're going off-roading, you're bouncing around, you're not gonna have trailer roulette, um, which is when you open up the door, what's all over the floor, right? So these stay locked. You push the center button, pull it out. It's a really nice feature to have for when you're traveling, especially in those back road, rough off-roading areas. So as we come back up here, we come back over here, we have, as always, we got our three burner stove that runs off of propane, has an electric start, you can hear that right there. And then to get the gas going, you actually have to push them down and then twist them and you hold them so that way you can get the gas to feed through into your burner. So again, your three burner stove, you use this open. You do not cook with this closed. This is not designed for closed. It's designed to be cooked on open. And you can use this as a prep area um, if need be. You know, you put a cutting board up here or whatever. Um, you can prep your food, do what you got to do. Now, when you are utilizing the inside kitchen, now it's not a big kitchen because obviously we want you to be utilizing the outdoor kitchen. We want you to be outdoors. But if you do use your indoor kitchen, we do have a light and vent area. So I'm gonna step up in here. So you got our two switches. One turns on our lights, one turns on our vents. It'll vents up out. So you wanna make sure, again, if you are cooking here, you wanna draw that heat and any burning materials out. And so that's what you use your vent for here, okay? And then of course we have our window, which I already opened. And you can kind of see part of um, one of the brackets that helps to support our, our roof. And I can show you it out the front window as well. That's one of the brackets with the spring. Now, one of the other features that has changed for the 2020 model is this right here, a mirror. Well, that seems kind of odd. Here's my kitchen with my sink. I got a mirror here. Now, in our older models, we had the mirror and a sink inside the bathroom. It is a wet bath and not a lot of room in the wet bath. So we wanted to make a little bit more room. So we moved the mirror out here. We took the sink out because you have a sink right here. You don't need a sink in the bathroom and three feet away in the kitchen. So we did that. We put it, we changed the inside. So let's get into the kit, into the shower here. Now, one of the things to light up the shower is our light switch. So there's a light switch right here. That's going to light up the shower. Now I have this enclosed because this makes 
your privacy area so you have a private shower. Otherwise, you can just have this open and this can be vented out and you know, if you're familiar with who you're with, you can talk with them and do what you need to do. But there is a lock. You release the lock right here. You open this up. And if you take a look in the shower, and so you'll see there used to be a sink in the corner there, which again, took up uh, a bit of space. So now you have just a sliding shower head with a soap dispenser or a soap holder so you can have that you see you have a vent window there so that way while you're taking a shower you can you know be looking out into nature um, but it also gives you a little vent as well as a vent of pa a powered vent a fan overhead there with again the extra lighting and then you have of course your porcelain flush toilet so again this is a wet bath and so we've afforded you again a little bit more space a little bit more room by eliminating the sink in this bathtub so as, again it's not the largest thing and i don't want to step in here because again this is a brand new unit it's going out to a customer but i can kind of lean in here and you can kind of see um there's, there's still quite a bit of room in here um yeah it's not like showering at home obviously it's not like being in a 19 with a big separate shower but there's quite a bit of room in here uh, especially with the elimination of this sink so i'm excited about this shower i'm excited that they've made the changes to this um, it really buys someone a lot more space, a lot more room, and for someone a lot more room to move around. I'm really excited about this feature in the HQ12. It's a great little feature to have. All right, so now as we move past the shower, we run into the first pillar here. Now, as we scroll down, I'm gonna start at the very bottom. There's a little cabinet door here. And as I open this up, if you look inside, you can see there is a hot water um mixing valve so this way it's kind of like what you have on your hot water heater at tank at home that way you're not running scalding hot water through your system um, you're able to mix it and not run quite as hot and say and protect yourself you can also see the clear tube in there that's the filler tube so when you're running water and i believe that may be the black tank filler tube so as you're running the water through that that's what's going to be flowing into your black tank but you also see gas line um, as well as other water lines, hot lines, cold lines, and the water lines going everywhere. So you're not gonna be able to store anything in here, but you will be able to see where, you know, certain different parts are in your system. So as we travel up a little bit, we have our heater. That is our 16,000 BTU heater. So this is a front, this adjusts, you know, down, you know, to the sides and what have you. Um, and we wanna have it close to the floor. Obviously, heat rises. So you want to start low to the floor with your heat so that way the heat will rise up. And then we have like a little cubby hole area, a little cubby area. Um, you can use this as a step to help yourself climb up onto the bunk bed that's up here. Again, this is a four person unit. It will sleep four people up here and there's a bunk bed. We'll get to that, but you can use this as a step. As we come up, we have the satellite switch for our inverter. Now the satellite switch has three different settings, inverter on, inverter off, and power saver auto and again you do not do not do not ever want to use the power saver auto switch um, what that does is that sends a continuous pulsing uh, set of uh, uh, of power electricity through your system and if you have it on that thinking you're saving your battery power what you're actually doing is you're draining your battery that is for technician use only you will only need off or on okay now when i flip it to the on position we have a couple lights light up and you'll hear a beep and that beep will be the microwave there we go the microwave just kicked on and then with the three lights you have a green a yellow and a red now usually green means good yellow means hey something's wrong and red means hey something is definitely wrong there's an alarm well the red definitely does mean alarm and there's a fault or an overload something wrong so you should address um, your electrical system uh, with your inverter if that ever comes on the yellow it just says inverter on that's it. it means it's going off of the battery as the priority so this is just basically saying you are in normal function you're good to go i'm not charged or i'm not plugged into anything and the solar panels don't count as being plugged in then you have your green light your green light says battery charger and it says shore or generator so you're going to get power by way of two ways either by plug being plugged into a generator 
or a shower power, and then that's plugged into your 30 amp plug. So when you plug into a shore line or you plug into a generator and you want to charge your batteries, you need to turn your inverter on, okay? Now, if it's just your solar panels, you can leave it in the off position unless you want to use your microwave or use your TV or utilize one of your inverter plugs. And the inverter plugs are marked as such, and I'll show you that in just a little bit. But if you're going to charge something, your inverter changes into a converter. So it's converting your AC power into DC power, AC coming from the wall and DC going to your battery, okay? So you're gonna convert instead of invert from DC to AC power, which is how we're gonna make our microwave and our TV run. So we're just on normal function right now. We're going off of batteries so we can leave it off. But again, if I wanna charge off of my, my power line, my 30 amp plug, I'll switch it on and that's gonna charge my battery, okay? As we continue up, I'm gonna go ahead and turn this back on. As we continue up, we have our radio. Right now it says no device because uh, you can't hook up with like USB and other different things. Um, but it says no device. And so usually you will um, you know, deal with your fade um, back and forth to go between your inside speakers, which if you look up, we have a speaker here. And then there's another speaker towards the front of the unit. And then you would change, I believe it's the fade setting, um, to change it to the outside speakers. Um, so I don't know what the, all the, what the settings are with it, what they've done with it, but you kind of play with it a little bit, but it's either fade between the front and back, kind of like if it's in a car, and that will give you your speakers outside as well. So as we continue up a little bit, we have our bunk. Now, the bunk bed does have its own window. I haven't opened that one, uh, just because of the way the light's shining, but it's even got a little special wall a little magnetic wall that pops up. So that way, if you are up here, you're not gonna roll off, you'll hit this wall. I believe this bed is about uh, two and a half foot wide by about seven foot long. It's quite a long bed. Uh, so if someone's really tall, that's where they're gonna be. Um, so if you're in travel mode, this little wall needs to be flat. Um, if no one's gonna be utilizing this, then this will just, very simply, push up out of the way. And then you have that much more headroom and space in this area, especially if it's just two of you. Um, if there's more of you, or uh, let's say it's just two of you, um, and you want to have some clothing storage, um, you know, put your clothes and stuff in a bin, store it up here on top of this bunk bed. Um, that's the best place for it to be. And then when you're gonna travel, just take it down, set it on the floor, travel on down the road. But otherwise, yeah, you can have this down, you can have this up, do whatever you wish with it. It's a nice big bunk. This is one of my favorite units. I love the HQ12. Um, not too big, not too small. It's got a lot of the amenities, every amenity you need. Um, and it's good for two people, it's good for four people. It depends on what you wanna do. So now I'm gonna come over here and we're gonna look at our electrical panel. So our electrical control panel, actually before I cover that, I'm gonna go just a little bit farther to our Dometic thermostat. This is the thermostat for the heater. The heater's mounted here. And so the top is a switch. So the on off switch, and then the bottom is where the thermostat is for adjusting between hot or cold or whatever you wanna be. Here in the front of it though is our control panel, the famous Black Series control panel with our breakers. Remember, we don't use fuses on any of our units. We use breakers. So again, if you're having an issue with something not functioning correctly, you come to these breakers here. If you have an issue with your air conditioner, remember it's the breakers outside that I, I pointed out. Here is your two water pumps, your general water pump switch, your drinking water pump switch. This has our readout for how much water is in our drinking water, our general water, and then how much water or how much waste is in our gray tank and how much waste is in our black tank. And then obviously we also have our water heater switch. Again, water heater works off of propane and 12 volt power, and it works off of electricity from the shoreline. So if you're plugged in a shoreline, you turn on this switch. If you don't have a shoreline, you turn on this switch to get your hot water going. And then we have our electric meter. And so this talks about, uh, this tells us how many volts uh, are being used, what our current is, uh, the amount of energy and how much power. So this has our readouts for everything that's going on. So that's our electrical panel. Then we have a nice little like a magazine cover right here. Um, we can sit here, we can uh, put some magazines in here, some maps, uh, a book, you know, whatever you'd like to be, whatever you'd like to put in here. 
Um, behind me, I got a window. And, and so we've talked about our windows before. I'm gonna show you though. Um, again, we have our nighttime privacy screen. We got our daytime bug screen. But again, if you're not having any issues with bugs, open these up. Allow the air to flow freely through the unit. Remember, this is a much cooler unit when you don't have anything restricting your airflow. Trust me, uh, in this hot California heat, it is much cooler in here, feeling the air flowing. You can even see the, the blinds kind of waving a little bit uh, from the air flowing through here. Now, again, these are dual pane windows. Um, they're tinted. Um, as well as they make things very quiet. It's a polymer. And so what I'm gonna do, that, like I said, I've pointed out before, if you can kind of see, uh, I'll go to this one here. It's got two prongs that you're gonna close this with. So uh, again, there's multiple points that'll open, so I'm gonna close it. Now, if it's a windy condition or you still just want some airflow through your unit, you come to the middle lock, okay? And the middle lock still leaves a little bit of gap and allows air to still kind of flow through, especially in a windy condition. Now, if you want to close it up for the night, you don't want any airflow or it's raining or whatever it may be, you close it all the way. Now, once you close it all the way, it seals tightly. And like I said before, with this dual pane, it really helps to block out a lot of the noise. So again, you, you got some noisy neighbors, maybe they're out drinking late at night, having a party, and you've had enough party and you've done your, your drinking for the evening, you're going to bed, you close up these windows and really it blocks up a lot of that noise. And that's one of the nice features of these windows. So again, just to open it, you just flip the lock open, flip the lock open, it pops it open, and again, it's ratcheting you ratchet it to the height you like to have it open, and there you go, your open window. Now let's say you're dealing with bugs, so you have your bug screen closed, but you wanna leave the screen open for nighttime airflow, because when you do have your privacy screen down, you, you don't get much airflow. So you have this open, and that's why we still have our blinds. So you take your blinds, you roll them down, and that way you still have your nighttime darkness, right away when the sun comes up, you still have the blinds blocking out the sun. That's why we still have that. Now, one of the other features that's right here, right next to me, as long as we're right here, is our reading lights. Let me push this out of the way here, if I can, somewhere. There we go, it is our reading lights. And so right now it's on, I'm gonna turn it off real quick. And so it's just a touch button. So when you touch it, it's got a touch sensor, it gives you this nice little blue ambient light which is really kind of nice, it kind of acts like a night light for you at nighttime, just kind of maybe sets the mood for you, whatever you want to do. When you touch it again, it turns on the light for you. Now here's one of the things with this. If you touch and hold the switch, it will go brighter. Remove your finger, touch the switch again and hold it, and it will go dimmer. So it also acts as a dimmer switch. And then to turn it off, you just touch it one more time. Okay, and that's one of the really neat and nice features about these little reading lights. Another feature, if you look just below here, and you'll notice this says inverter. So when I turn on the inverter, the inverter will power this plug. So not all of the plugs are powered. If you remember, uh, I talked about a blue plug that's outside, that's a GFCI plug that will not work on the inverter. We also have another plug that's over by the sink that I'll need to point out. That, does not, that is a GFCI plug that does not work on the inverter, okay? So only the ones that say inverter will work off of the inverter. Next to that, we have another marine grade plug. Now this one is a dual one. This one has a cigarette lighter style plug, okay? So if you have a cigarette lighter style plug, that goes in here. And next to this, we have, you can see the two slots, there's two USB ports. So you can plug in two uh, USB style charging things, like two phones, I guess, if you like. You can plug those in here and you're good to go. But again, marine grade quality is what we're dealing with here. Okay, so, so I'm sitting here on the bed but because I want to show you the dinette area. Now, the dinette, like all of our units, is utilizing this high quality. I mean, again, you feel this, you can really feel the quality in this material. It's a high grade, marine grade, Faux leather. It's beautiful. It's got this nice 
diamond design stitched into it. I, I love our seating. I love the materials that are being used. And I love how we do the finish work on all this stuff. It's not just a piece of board. We cover it with these materials. So it looks very clean, very nice. Now I've already removed the pad that you'd be sitting on so I can show you underneath the seat. So again, the hose I pointed out, like I said, that is your black tank hose that you would be flushing the system out of. And then here over here, if you look over here, you see two more clear hoses, and those are gonna be for your general water tank and for your drinking water tank. And if you also notice, there's a whole lot for water hoses underneath there, as well as two water pumps. Now, like I said, like I said, each one, each tank has its own individual pump. One is for the general tank, and one is for your drinking water. So again, very important to keep that in mind um, for when you're out camping, you wanna make sure you're utilizing your drinking water appropriately to stay hydrated. So again, this is one of our benches. Um, and under the other bench is where you're gonna be finding our batteries and our inverters. So we'll get into that in just a minute. So now I've switched over to the other side of the dinette. I've moved the pad. And so under the other bench, and again, it's the same, same materials, everything put together. But underneath this side, we have our electrical system. The big blue box is our Ames power system. That is our 2000 watt inverter. So again, that is what's gonna allow you to run your microwave, run your TV, maybe make a pot of coffee in the morning. Um, whatever you're gonna be plugged into, the inverter is where you wanna be at. And then you can see we have utilization, we've utilized two AGM batteries. And those again are 100 amp hours a piece. So you have 200 amp hours altogether. And then there's fuses on top of that. You have a control panel fuse, solar controller, uh, towing vehicle controller, and the inverter fuse. So again, if you have run into issues with any of those products um, during use, look to see if maybe there was a short in the system and one of these breakers, these fuses have blown. Now, the switch that's on the wall, and I'll talk about the switch in a little while, will cut off the battery power to the unit, but it won't be a true battery cutoff. If you truly wish to disconnect the batteries, then you would want to go to this switch here. So right now, you see it's in the green, so for both batteries, one and two, otherwise you would flip this around to the red to shut that off. And then if you look over here in the corner a little bit underneath, that's also where you're gonna find your battery charge controller. So the solar panels will come into the controller and the controller will read the battery power. If the batteries need to be charged, then they will allow the power to go from the solar panels to the charge controller into the batteries till they're at 100%. If the batteries do not need a charge, it's going to protect it. So it takes the, set, the power from the solar panels and it stops it at the charge controller, okay? So that's what's going on there with the charge controller. It's protecting your batteries from being overcharged. Now, on your inverter, very important. The big blue box, box in here is your inverter. And you see a little black switch here and the black switch says inverter on, inverter off, and Power Saver Auto. It's the exact same style of switch that you would find on the satellite switch on the wall that we discussed a little bit ago. The satellite switch is your main switch. So this unit will always be in the off position. Unless something happens to your switch, your satellite switch, and it's not functioning, you would disconnect it. There's a, a almost like a telephone cable looking type thing. You would disconnect it, and then you would use the inverter switch as your main function switch. Otherwise, this stays on off, and you utilize the satellite switch on the wall. Now, you may be asking yourself, where's the table? Where do I eat at? Well, we didn't put one in. No, I'm just kidding. We have one here. If you look down here on the front at the base of the bed, there is a cabinet looking thing with a lock. So make sure when you are traveling, you make sure you lock. You push this down, it's locked in place. To release it, you push the button. So as I grab this handle and I pull this out, magically appearing is our table. Now, the nice part is, if someone is going to sleep here, this makes up a bed. So we sleep two people here, we can sleep a person or even two kids here. And again, person up here on the bunk bed. But what you do is there's an extra pad. So what you do, and actually the, the pads are actually split like it is in the 19, 
And so you take the two pads and the two pads have a section of Velcro on the back. So here's a soft section. I, I won't be able to fit in here with it, but it's also got a strip that protects the rough side. So that way you're not rubbing up against this rough side. So again, the two sections attach together at the side. And of course it's not gonna cooperate with me. There we go, we attach it at the side and it would fit along here and this creates a bed, okay? So the nice part is when they're not together, they are smaller, so it makes it a little bit easier to put them off to the side out of the way because they aren't quite as large. So for now, I'm gonna to toss them right here. So again, this is our bed configuration. To make it into your table configuration is very easy in that you just kind of grab the edges and it swivels up and it will lock in place. Then you just grab the table and there's wheels on the floor and it will slide back into place. So you can have a couple people sitting here in the benches and you can actually have someone sit here on the bed. They would just have to straddle the poles that are sticking down. Now, very important couple things. One, do not sit on this table. This table, none of the tables should really be designed for. I mean, I know the ones in the HQ models, the other HQ, like the 19, something like that, they're a little bit stronger, sturdier because of the, the heavy duty steel frame below it, but these are not designed for someone to be standing on, especially this one. Be very careful with this. Now, many of these tables have been broken because people force it. There is a release underneath. So if you slide the table back out, and if you look, on the very end down there, there's a release bar right here. Release the bar and it's, it pivots back down. And again, it's a very simple bar. People miss that all the time. I'll actually rip the bolts out. Here's the shells. So here's the thing too, be very careful. When lowering the table down, if you can see, don't grab the edge of the table here because as you come down, you can see it's pinching my fingers and take it from me, it hurts. So be very careful. Make sure you grab the tables on the sides, on the edges when you're lowering it down. Then once you're done with it, you take it, you slide it right back into place. If you're gonna be traveling, you lock it again, lock it back in place, and off you go down the road as soon as you're done packing up. Now, as long as I'm down, kind of down in this area, I'd really like to take this time to point out our wood grain linoleum. Rather than just going with like a plain linoleum, we really utilize this beautiful wood grain. It honestly really looks like wooden planks, um, but it is linoleum, but it's very nice, very durable. Um, and it's a very nice linoleum. I, I, I really like that feature. It's one of the nice, nice features that helps set us apart, I feel. So obviously one of the key features in the front of our unit is the queen size bed. The biggest bed where you can be sleeping two people. So typically it's designed for sleeping this way in design. Unless you have a whole bunch of kids, you can fit a couple kids on here this way if they're on the shorter side as well. But we have our bed. So we have a nice big bed up here for you. We have a nice shelf, some kind of knickknack shelves. You can store some items up into there. And then as we come around the corner, we have another window, again, with the shades and everything. And in front of the window, obviously you see our TV. Again, our TV, this is a DVD player with a TV. And so that is plugged into our antenna. And so we have our King antenna up here. And we've had, uh, I've done a video on our King antenna. So if you haven't seen that, um, be sure to check that out so you can kind of see the features of the King Antenna. But just to point out very quickly, there is an on and off switch to the King Antenna. And so the red light means there's no signal, the blue light tells us the strength of the signal, and then again there's a switch here so that way we can pivot this. Uh, they call this the sure lock, because if it's not, if I don't push this, it grinds and we don't want that to happen. Now. There is a secondary power switch. So just in case you run into issues and you can't get your uh, antenna to turn on, down here there's a black box. It's a King Jack black box power switch. It's usually a white cable. It goes to the back of the TV and you can see there's a little green light. Well, next to the green light is a black button right here. And so if I push that button, it turns off that light. Well, that turns off the power to the antenna. You see there's no light. So if I come back down, 
and I push this button, there we have our lights back on. So that's gonna be our power switch for the antenna. Now, some of the other things are, we also have another, if you look right here, another inverter switch, and so you, or an inverter plug, and you can see that's where the TV is plugged into. So you would need to turn on the inverter to run your TV, and then you have even a light switch. You have a light switch over here to turn off these front uh, lights, turn them on and off, so you don't have to go over to the main switch over by the wall. And of course, each side over here, we also have LED, or excuse me, not LED, oh well, yeah, LED, um, map reading lights over here, or we have our reading lights on each side, so that way you can read if you're in bed or something like that. So here I am back over here by the door. I've seen the TV, we've seen the dinette, and another window and everything, and so we have this row of switches here. So the very large square one, that is your battery cutoff. I talked about that a little bit ago. If I switch that, it shuts off all my power, but again, it's not a true battery cutoff. We have to get to the switch that's underneath the dinette seat here. So we turn that on. We have double switches here. Now it's only a single rocker switch. It only goes one way. Now these switches turn off the puck lights, the ceiling lights. One touch off, shuts off one section, the other one shuts off the back section. Those are our lights. Then we have the top one, which is a rocker switch. It rocks both ways. Now these are for your outside floodlights. So say for instance, you click it to the front one, the front lights come on. You click it to the rear one, the rear floodlights come on. Then you click it to the front one, maybe the right side comes on. Click it to the rear one, the other side comes on. So these are your floodlight switches. So floodlights, inside lights, battery cut off. Now one of the other features that I wanted to make sure I pointed out was a couple of electronic features. Now this one, this is a GFCI plug, a ground fault current interrupter plug because it's over here by the sink. So this is not gonna work off of your inverter. This is one of the ones where you have to be plugged into a shoreline power or your generator for this to work. And then we have this right here. This is a thermostat control switch. What we've done is on our water tanks, on the general water tank and the drinking water tank, we've included a silicone heat pad. So the temperature would show up here, you would turn this on, the temperature would show up here, and you could adjust it so that way you can keep your general water and your drinking water from freezing over in cold weather conditions because we don't want to have our water freezing up. So again, you'd have to be on a generator or on a 30 amp plug so that way we would have this function. But it comes with the unit along with the rest of our insulation. Now, the insulation of these units, again, the windows tie in because they are dual pane windows. And so that helps a lot with maintaining either a warm environment or a cold environment, depending on, on whether you're running your AC or you're running your heat, uh, depending on what conditions you're in. And this one, obviously we want the AC running. Um, in our walls, we use a expanding polystyrene foam. So it, you, we pour in the liquid, it's foam that fills in all of the gaps. In other areas, we'll use the block polystyrene foam. So that way we have insulation in those areas. On the base, under our floor, we have uh, an insulate on the floor underneath our unit as well. So we have insulation all the way around. And so it comes out to an R16 insulation factor for an overall general insulating factor dealing with our units. Now, speaking of insulation, we also, and keeping things cool, we also have our air conditioner. So our air conditioner actually is a dual purpose air conditioner. So we actually have cooling air and we have heated air because this also works as a heat pump. Now, if you want the air conditioner to run, you turn it to the blue switches. The blue switches, you're getting cool air. And what occurs with an air conditioner is there is exhausted air that is blown out and that is heated air. Now, the way a heat pump works, when you switch over to the red, the air conditioner will actually run in reverse. So then the cold air will be blown outside and that heated air will be blown inside. So that acts like, so if you wake up in the morning, you have a chilly morning, that you turn that on, you don't want to turn on the 16,000 BTU heater, then what's occurring is you're heating up this environment with this heated air from this unit. Now to open up the vents, you got little side vents here that open up here on each corner um, and on the front and back. You have vents to open up this side vent here 
and then you also have an adjustment control. This is obviously fan control for speed, and then this is hot and cold control with this one as well. Now, the one last feature I would like to point out on this air conditioning unit, besides the heat pump and the air conditioner, you also have the fan feature, and that's what the gray is for. The gray is just if you wanna run your fan, you're not gonna be running your air conditioner. Now, a couple other features I would like to point out, just so you're familiar with it, is as we go out and we look out one of the side screens right here, you see a shock absorber. And the shock absorber is what helps to lift and hold this roof area up. So that's what's keeping the top up. And if you look out the front window, I showed one of the bars out the back window, that crisscross bar that's also connected with a spring and that's helping to keep the roof up as well as helping you to close the unit as well. So there's a lot of features that go into this unit. All right, so now that we've gone over all of the amenities here in the interior of the HQ12, now I wanna show you how we close it up. Now, I've already zipped up some of the windows. I've, I left one up here um, and I left a couple things in place just to show you. So I don't like to close it up with these windows rolled up like this. I, I just feel it, it crunches it too, too much. So what I do is I go ahead and I release my clips and I will zip up all my windows. Now I've already, like I said, I've already gone around. I've already zipped up all of my windows and that leaves me with one more thing to do. Now obviously closing your windows, you can do that after the fact. It just depends on what order you wanna do it in. But one of the important things is this bunk bed. If you have it in an up position, you need to make sure it's in a down position and make sure that this little wall is also down and flat and you don't have anything stored up here because the top is gonna to come down about on top of this. And so anything below this line is gonna get crunched. So you wanna be very careful of stuff like that. So you just make sure all the items are out of the way. I've zipped up the shower. I made sure everything is zipped up, closed up, all that kind of fun stuff. So now all we gotta do is close up the lid. So now that I have all the windows zipped up, I have the bunk bed down, I got everything squared away how I need to do it. Now I'm gonna pull this down. Now, like I said, I don't like to just hang on this to pull this down. I use this to assist, but most of my strength, I depend on this right here. So what I'll do is I'll grab this and I'll grab this and I will pull it down at the same time, okay? So once I get this down, then what I can do is I can lock this in place to help hold it uh, so it doesn't go anywhere. So now I got that locked in place. So now I'm gonna come back here and I'm gonna pull down on this. Now I got the roof closed. So now we're gonna go outside and we're gonna pin up to hold the roof in place. So now that we've got the lid closed, what we wanna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reclamp the lid and put the pins in place. So again, just like I showed you, I'm gonna unclamp them and see that everything's still in place and we don't run into the risk of catching that hook when we're raising it up. So we bring this up, clamp it in place, put the pin, and again, the opening is large enough to fit a small lock. So if you wish to lock the lid, you can do so for whatever reason you may want, but you can put a lock in there. So I got this one. I'm gonna do the one over here. Now again, obviously if you need a step stool or something to do that, you can. And again, when I redo my clips, I like to do it over the clamp like that. I just kind of like it a little extra hold, at least I, I feel it is. Um, so that's one of the things like I, I like to do. So now I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna do the front. And then once the front's done, you're ready to hook up and go on down the road. All right. So, so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the Black Series HQ12. Again, one of my more favorite units, um, just for size and just, just kind of cool levels. I, I just love this unit. It's a cool little unit. But hopefully I was able to answer all of your questions. If you have any further questions, be sure to send us an email at info at blackseriescamper.com. That's I-N-F-O at blackseriescamper.com. And I'll be sure to get out an answer to you as quickly as I can, or at least find an answer for you, research it, get it out to you, let you know what's going on with it. But I think hopefully I covered everything for you. So again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry saying, take care everybody and we'll see you out there. 
How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers in Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.